Hello. Today I'm continuing my videos on games that I own but I've only played once. And next up is Homeland, which I purchased on a sale back in 2017 on Amazon for I think it was like $11. So even though I never watched this TV show, I had a friend that did and I thought, you know, maybe we'll play it since he's watched the show, he might enjoy it. Um so I played it once in 2017. And then I had not played it again until yesterday where I played it again so I would know the rules to make this video. So uh, let's get started with setup. Alright, first each player starts with one agent. That's these figures. I'm going to be playing a three player game. So give each player one agent. Each player also starts with one soldier. So I will give each player one soldier. Each player gets one agency rep token, that's these. Each player gets one political clout token. And each player will also get three intel cards. Now, I will mention that uh, this rule book is uh, not the best I'd say that anyway none of the decks doesn't mention shuffling but obviously I'm gonna assume you're supposed to shuffle the decks so I'm gonna shuffle this Intel deck and deal each player three cards alright I've done that and uh, your cards are uh, you know supposed to be kept secret from other players I'm gonna go ahead and uh, at least reveal player one's cards just so you see what they look like and then the rules say each player should take a case lead card color I'm assuming they actually mean take a deck of case lead cards of the color they wish so that's what I'm gonna do so we've got purple here green here and orange here then you take a you create an initiative deck by shuffling one case lead card from each player. Shuffle those together, and then set that shuffle deck uh, aside. Those cards will be turned over to determine the first player each round. And then once you've gone through all three, then you shuffle it again. You know for the following rounds. Then you're going to create your agenda deck determined by the number of players so I'm gonna need two loyal agents one because I'm playing three players two loyal agents one political opportunist and one terrorist mole so let me get uh, those cards out of this deck alright as you can see I've got two loyal agents one political opportunist and one terrorist mole then you'll shuffle those together and deal one to each player face down so only the player that receives it knows um, what they have and that information is supposed to be kept secret throughout the game because you know basically one person could be a hidden traitor um, the, the political opportunist has a little bit uh, different goal than the uh, loyal agent but they're not complete traitor like the terrorist mole and then the other card there's one more than the number of players so the card not being used is discarded unseen so let me get those shuffled up dealt out to my players and uh, I'll come back all right so I've got one card dealt to each player and as I said this would normally be remain hidden but since I'm playing solo I'm gonna reveal oh my player one he's actually the terrorist mole so he'll be kind of playing against the other players uh, player two he's a loyal agent and oh, player three is a political opportunist now because you always have one card more than the number of players it's possible you could have a game where you don't have the terrorist um, or you may not have the political opportunist but uh, anyway that's what we got for this game so just a little bit a little bit about each role the uh, loyal agent um, they're working to stop all the uh, terrorist plots and uh, you know they only win if uh, the terrorists ter all the if the terrorists win then 
uh, all the loyal agents lose the game. The political opportunists, they're kind of middle of the road. If the terrorists win, then they lose, but they want some of the terrorist plots to be successful because that's how they gain their political uh, clout. Um, so they, they get more victory points uh, if, if some of the terrorist plots are successful, but not enough that the terrorists win. And finally, the terrorist mole, obviously, um, they want the terrorists to win because if, if that happens, then the loyal agents and the political opportunists uh, lose, lose and the terrorist mole wins. Now, it's still possible that the terrorist mole can win even if the terrorists lose um, because then you go to victory points, but the other players get a chance to make an accusation of who they think is the mole and if even one of them selects uh, the real mole, then the mole loses. Now, unfortunately, as I said, that's all the rule book says about setup. But, obviously, you have to set the board in the middle of the table somewhere. You have a plot deck, which obviously you need to shuffle and put somewhere nearby. You have an organization deck, which obviously you need to shuffle and put somewhere nearby. You have an asset deck you need to shuffle and put nearby. You have a threat analysis board which you need to put somewhere near the board. Um, you have your agents and soldiers you need to make a supply of. You've got your terrorist progress tokens, agency progress tokens, political clout mo markers, and agency rep markers which all either need to put be put in a pile ne near the board or like I do just keep them in the uh, insert and draw them out when you need them but anyway none of this is mentioned in the rules but I've got all that done so uh, setup is complete and now we'll get started with uh, how to play and one thing I forgot to mention in setup again not mentioned in the rule book is the game does come with the uh, you know some of these uh, player turn, uh, terrorist turn, you know, help cards to give to each player. Um, so I'll keep one right there. But yeah, not mentioned in the less than stellar rule book. Alright, well the game is played in rounds. The uh, game always starts with the terrorist turn where you'll go through these steps and once the terrorist turn is over then you go to the player's turn where each player We'll take turns in uh, turn order, starting with the player that has the terrorist marker, and that will be determined by the initiative deck, which we'll get to here shortly. But uh, let's start with the terrorist turn. So as you can see, the first thing in the terrorist room is move the, move the terrorist marker. Basically, that's just determining first player for the round. So you'll flip the first card of the initiative deck. That's shows the orange player so you give them the terrorist marker now that does not mean they're a terrorist marker that's basically again the first player uh, marker for the round so when it comes to the player turns uh, they'll go first so the next thing on the terrorist turn is analyze imminent threats now on the first turn of the game there will not be any imminent threats because the board starts empty so actually on the first turn of the game, other than move terrorist marker, you skip step two and step three and go right to step four, reveal new threats. But let's go ahead and talk about if there was a threat on the board. I'll put an example one and we'll talk about analyze imminent threats. So all the threats, terrorist threats in this line you can see are imminent. So in the analyze imminent threats, uh, step you would analyze each threat starting with the threat on the left now in my example I've just got one here so to analyze this threat you take the cards and first thing you're going to do is put the plot card face up on this threat analysis board like this then you'll take the organization card that's there and put it here kind of overlapping then you'll take the case lead which is put on there by a player which we'll talk about later and you'll put that here so you know who the case lead was and then any intel cards 
you'll shuffle up and we'll explain why in a minute but be before you flip them over you shuffle them up then you flip them over one at a time if they're red you'll put them on this side that's for the terrorist another red and a blue then you look at the threat what you need to defeat this terrorist threat is you total these numbers five from the plot card three from the uh, organization card so that's eight plus the number of red cards you got over here so another five for a total of 13 then you add any blue cards that you got we got three and if you had any agents um, on here which we'll talk about how those would get there later um, but if you had agents they add plus one to agents so in this case we only had uh, three blue against 13 red so in this case the plot the terrorist plot succeeds you know it's either going to be neutralized if the blue score is higher than the total here plus any red cards but if the red score is higher than your total of blue cards then the plot succeeds and you'll go through these steps so if the plot succeeds the red total is equal to or higher than the blue then add terrorist plot markers equal to the amount of the plot's impact. Now the plot's impact is here. So you would put two terrorist plot markers or terrorist progress tokens along this track here. Then all players gain a number, number of political clout markers equal to the plot's impact. So again two. So each player would gain two political uh, clout markers. Now, remember I said the political opportunist, that's how he gets victory points. So he kind of wants some of these terrorist threats to succeed so he can get more of these uh, political clout markers. Now, there are other ways to get them, but that's a good source of them. And then finally, you apply fallout. Now, the fallout will be here on the card and in this case it says the case lead gets exposure and what exposure would mean is the case lead which happens to be the green player would have to put any intel cards that he currently has in his hands he would have to put face up in front of him so the other players know what he has and they have to remain face up until he plays them or discard now any new ones that he gets would he would be able to keep hidden again and also, we haven't talked about assets yet, but if you have a if you have an asset and it's deactivated um, in your area, it's face down. Well, if you get exposure, you have to flip it face up so everybody sees what your asset is. But there's different fallout effects. That just happens to be one. Um, usually, they will affect the case lead, but it could be a global fallout in which it affects all players. Now we'll just go over what would happen if the threat was actually neutralized by the player, which is what the uh, loyal agent and the political opportunity opportunist wants to happen the majority of the time. If the threat's neutralized um, because the blue total was higher than the red, then you would add agency progress tokens equal to the impact over here on the uh, agency track probably want to make them match the picture doesn't really matter then you see the case lead whoever is the lead on that car earns agency rep tokens equal to the plots impact so in this case green uh, player would earn two agency rep tokens which again are these so green player would earn two of those now that is uh, one of the ways the loyal agent earns victory points is for each of these he has so that the loyal agent likes to gain a lot of these agency rep tokens now they have other uses which we'll talk about shortly but um, that's that's one reason the loyal agent wants to neutralize the threats threats because he gains these he wants to be the case lead where on the ones where he can neutralize and then also the case lead gains the organization's advantage which states here so this advantage the case lead the green player would get to draw one asset card
which again are these cards here and we'll talk about those shortly so that's how you analyze a threat so again you would do that for each imminent threat that's um, here on this top level of the board and again not mentioned in the rules but uh, assuming after you've analyzed the threat you have some kind of discard pile that you put these used plot um, cards in and any used intel cards and give the case lead card back to the player again none of that's mentioned in the rules but I'm assuming that's what you're supposed to do all right so after you've analyzed all the imminent threats the next thing you do is advanced threats so I've kind of set a few up here um, so anything that wasn't imminent will now be advanced up a level so starting at the um, severe threats you move all the severe threats up into the imminent level and then if you had any more down here but in this case our next one is down to low so it would move up into the guarded level so again any threats you have in these lower levels will all move up one step to the next level and now any here will be imminent threats that you'll have to analyze for the um, next terrorist turn and then finally on the terrorist turn you reveal new threats and to do that you uh, reveal a new threat equal to the number of players in the game and for each new threat so we're gonna reveal three new threats since we got three players in the game you take a plot card face down and you take one of your organization cards flip it face up and that will show you what threat level it goes in so in this case it goes in the low threat level so we'll put that here and what you can see here is well good god okay. besides the threat level it goes in you can see the probable impact I say probable because there's a few of these plot cards that they're a diversionary tactic so even though they may say they're gonna have an impact of three or two here when you actually turn it over in the reveal threat stage it's really a zero so it's a diver diversionary plot to make you waste resources on it when it's really not gonna have a high impact um, so the impacts are usually zero one two or three and again remember that's how many progress tokens you're gonna place if the plot succeeds or how many agency progress tokens you're going to place if the threat is neutralized. So that's you know one little bit of information that you're allowed to see, um, and then it's going to tell the organization that's you know trying to do this threat. Which here it's just a lone wolf. Here it's military separatists. Here you got religious extremists and radicalized local militia. And then you have some idea of how difficult it's going to be to neutralize this threat because you can see part of the, uh, you know, part of what the red total is going to be here. So that on the organization card, you see a sophistication. Well, this one only has a, a sophistication of zero. So just looking at the organization, um, it, it looks like it's not going to be as difficult to beat. Now remember the plot card when it's revealed also has a red number, um, the complexity number that's going to be added to the sophistication plus any red intel cards that are on there. Um, so anyway after you've revealed a, or put a plot card face down and an organization card face, face up then you'll also grab one intel card which nobody sees and uh, place it face down on the deck or on the threat so you would do that you know once for for each player in the game so in my game I would have to reveal two more of those and you know they can some of them may immediately go in the imminent deck some may go in the or imminent level some may be severe elevated we just happen to draw low so they're not always low to begin with some of them can start right up there in imminent and we'll reveal another one just to maybe see that so you 
keep the plot card face down so all you can see is the impact oh well here we go so this one uh, is an imminent right off the bat and then of course as I said you draw an Intel card and keep that hidden and place that up there and um, as I said you can tell the sophistication on this one is a four the old Abu Nazir um, so this one you, you're thinking that's probably going to be difficult to beat all right so that's the terrorist turn after you reveal the new threats so then you go to the player turns now remember that will start with the player that has the terrorist marker and so it kind of tells you here on your turn what you have to do all right so on a player's turn there's two things they must do on their turn that's claim a case lead in other words you take one of your case lead cards and place it on an unclaimed threat in other words a threat without out already containing a case lead the other thing you have to do is play two intel cards so you have the intel cards in your hand you have to play two of them um, to threats on the board now the first one you play has to be to a case or to a threat that does not have your case lead um, card on it the second one you play can be played to any other case um, that may or may not have your case lead on it then the optional actions you can take um, those you must take these are optional now you can do these in any order but you must at least do these two on your turn where these you may or may not do so you can turn in an intel card for tokens well let's just go through it so we'll just start so claim a case lead so you, you start with the player that has the terrorist marker he's the first player so he's got to claim a case lead so there's currently the way I have the board set up there's three threats without a uh, case lead on it already so he takes one of his case lead cards and puts it on one of those threats now he's got to play two of his intel cards to a case now remember the red is um, going to go toward the terrorist so unfortunately he's only got one blue and two reds so he's got to play at least one of these reds to a case um, and remember the first one he plays has to go to um, a threat that does not that he's not the case lead on so since he's not the terror now the terrorist player the terrorist mole he wants to get these red cards on these threats so they'll fail but the political opportunist you know he he wants some to fail and some not to but anyway so all right so he's got to play two cards the first one to a case that's not his so his cases are the orange so um, he's gonna play now you do it face down so nobody knows what you played and you put it underneath the uh, put it underneath the case lead there and then he's got to play another one um, to another can now remember these are hidden nobody knows what you've got so then he's going to play this one to another case now that can be a case that's his own so he's got these up here he's going to play this uh, to this to this one it's kind of hard to keep these <laughs> all straight all right so those are the actions you must do let's look at the optional actions so the first one is turning an intel card for tokens well going back to our example of this player he's got one in, intel card left so he can turn it in uh, discard it for two agency rep tokens um, now really for the political opportunist he wants these uh, these political clout tokens for scoring but well as we'll talk about in a minute these other tokens can help him somehow so it's a turn in a card for tokens you just tur say, turn this in you can discard it and then you get two agency rep tokens so takes two agency rep tokens and puts them in his area all right the next optional action you can do is recruit an asset or take a soldier or an agent well let's talk about taking a soldier or an agent first so you just either take an agent or a soldier and put it in your area 
if in, so that's to take a soldier or an agent, and we'll talk about what they're for here when we get to deploy soldiers and insert, insert agents. But if you want to instead recruit an asset, remember you can only do one of these. You can either recruit an asset or take a soldier or take an agent. So if you want to recruit an asset, you actually have to pay three tokens to recruit an asset. Taking the soldier or the agent is free, but if you want to recruit an asset, then that costs you three tokens, any combination. So, you know, he could spend all three of these. Being the political opportunist, he wants to keep these. So, say if he wants to recruit an asset, he would discard these three agency rep tokens. And then you draw two asset cards look at them both and choose one to keep and one to discard and assets represent you know people you've uh, chosen to help you in your investigation they're also if you still have them they're worth victory points at the end but they'll each have some kind of ability uh, like this one when recruiting an asset you may choose any card in the discard pile instead of drawing any new cards or this guy, once per terrorist turn during the threat analysis, you may discard one undeployed agent to burn a red or blue intel card of your choice from the threat. Whenever something says to burn something, it goes out of the game, not to a discard pile. It actually goes out of the game. So anyway, you would choose one of these. Uh, maybe choose this one. Now when you uh, first recruit an asset, it's deactivated face down. The other one goes into the discard pile. All right, the next optional action you can do is deploy a soldier. Now you can deploy any number of soldiers that you have, but if but they all have to be deployed to the same threat. So you can deploy one or more, but they all have to be deployed to the same threat. And when you deploy, you just take them and put them on any. It doesn't have to be your own threat that you're a case lead. It can be on any threat. And it can even, you could even deploy a soldier to an unclaimed threat. So, you know, one that doesn't have a case lead assigned to it. But, um, so what are the advantages of deploying a soldier to a threat? Well, when you deploy soldiers to a threat, you can recon that threat. And what that allows you to do is look at all the intel cards that are on that threat. Now, right now, there's just one. But uh, when you deploy a soldier to a threat you can recon it if you want to you don't have to because the negative uh, thing about reconning the threats when you look at the intel cards you then have to grab one unseen and put it put it um, back in there in the mix of intel cards so you've actually added another intel card that you don't know about now it doesn't mention in the rules but uh, there's some discussion in the forums about when you recon a threat and look at the cards, the intel cards, whether you should shuffle them first before you look at them. That way, you know, if the person that went, you know, the last person to put a card on there was the mole, you know, and they put a red card on there, then you, if you recon the threat, you'll know who put that on there and possibly know who the mole is. Now, another player may just have to put a red card because they that's all they have. But anyway, so there's discussion. Again, it's not in the rules, but I think most people say to shuffle the cards before you look at them when you recon. So that's, you know, one advantage um, of deploying soldiers is you get to recon and look at the cards. The other thing is when there's two soldiers on a threat, then if somebody has an asset that has this drone strike ability, well, anytime um, somebody, somebody with an asset, an activated asset that has this don't drone strike ability, if there's at least two soldiers on a threat, they can immediately neutralize that threat. Well, I say immediately, but I, I think you have to use that ability when it's on your turn. So when it comes to your turn, if there's a threat that has two soldiers on it, um, then you can use that drone strike ability to burn that threat. And when you, when you use that ability to burn the threat, you remove it from the board, all the cards on it, um, without looking at them. I mean, the person would get his case lead card back, but you wouldn't look at what the plot was. You wouldn't look at the intel cards. You just take it off the board and don't reveal it. 
So the other thing you can do is insert or deploy an agent. So if you have an agent in your play area, you can deploy one or all, but again, they all have to go to the same threat. So when you deploy an agent to a threat, as we talked about before, that's going to give you plus one for each agent there when you're doing the threat analysis. But also, when you deploy an agent to a threat, it allows you to look at the bottom of the plot card, which will let you see the complexity, so you have a better idea of what the strength is going to be of that uh, and what the fallout. Now, now you can't tell, you can't reveal that card to anybody else. You can, you know, say, oh, that's you're not supposed to give exact numbers or anything to other people. You can say, oh, this is a strong one or something like that. But people may think you're trying to fool them because you're the mole or something. But anyway, when you deploy agent to a threat, um, that allows you to look at the bottom of the plot card on that threat and gives you the plus one when you're doing the threat analysis. And then the final optional thing you can do is activate and utilize your assets. So if you have a deactivated asset and you want to activate it, you can flip it over. And then anytime, um, once you have activated an asset, you can't deactivate it. It stays activated. Um, and again, that's when its abilities are available. So if you had this ability, this asset with the drone strike, you know, that's when you could use it when you're using your asset abilities. If, if you haven't activated it yet, you can't use its ability. Now, why, why would you maybe not want to activate an asset? Well, there are some effects that can happen from threat cards or intel cards that may say you have to burn or uh, yeah, burn an asset or an asset can be taken from you. But that can only happen to assets that are activated. So if, if uh, all your assets are deactivated, they can't be burned or taken. But once they're activated, and again, you can't deactivate them once they're active, then they can be targets um, that, that could be burned or taken by other game effects. And remember, assets besides uh, their abilities are also worth victory points um, at the end of the game if the uh, terrorists didn't win and you're trying to determine amongst the other players who won, uh, assets do count as victory points as indicated here. So all, those are all the things a player can do on their turn. Remember, they have to do these things they can do these things and you can do them all in any order so you can recruit an agent and then deploy it all in the same time and you can uh, get an asset for three tokens and activate it and use its ability if applicable all in the same turn then once you've taken all of your actions that you're going to take uh, you draw your hand size, you draw Intel cards back up to your hand size of three. Um, some abilities from uh, assets may increase your hand size, so then you would, of course, draw back up to your your new increased hand size if you have an asset that that increases your hand size. But the standard is three, so you would draw back up to three uh, Intel cards, and then that ends your turn, and then it passes to the player on the left. Once all players have taken their turn, then that's the end of the round, and you go back to the terrorist turn, starting with moving the terrorist marker. So, how does the game end? Well, as soon as this terrorist track is filled with terrorist progress markers, then the game ends immediately, and the terrorist and whoever had the terrorist mole agenda win the game. If instead the agency progress track fills up, then the terrorists have lost, and then you determine which players won the game. Now, again, the terrorist mole could still possibly win, but um, first everybody has a chance where they can try to accuse who they think is the mole. So the way that works, all the players take a case lead card from each other player, then if you want to make an accusation of somebody you think is the mole, then you play their card face down on the table. 
Um, if you don't want to make an accusation because you're not sure who the mole is or you don't think there's a mole in the game, then you put your own case lead card down on the table. So if everyone selects a card, they're all revealed at the same time who they think the mole is. If the mole receives any accusations at all, then they lose. And a, a player who correctly accuses the mole gains six victory points. And a player who incorrectly accuses somebody of being the mole and they're not loses three victory points. Then you tally up your victory points. The political opportunist tallies up victory points for each clout token he has. The loyal agent tallies victory points for each uh, rep token he has. Um, if the terrorist is still in the game, he wasn't accused then uh, he gets two victory points for each uh, terrorist progress token on the track. Then you also add uh, victory points for any of your active or deactive activated uh, assets. Um, now any assets you lost because they were burned, then they don't count. Um, then you total up and whoever has the highest score wins Homeland. All right, so let's go through a few example turns. I've reset everything back to just after set, set up. So, as we said, the terrorist turn is first. First thing we do is move the terrorist marker. So we do that by revealing the initiative deck. So that's purple's card. So he gets the terrorist marker. So he'll be first player when we get to the player turns. Because it's the first turn of the game, there's no imminent threats to analyze, there's no threats to advance, so we go straight to reveal new threats. Because there's three players, we're going to reveal three uh, threats. So we draw a plot card, an organization card that shows it's going to go in the severe, and we put an intel card on top of that. Alright, that's one. Let's get another one. That's an elevated, so that's going to go here. And put an intel card on that. And one more. Draw a plot card. Organization card that's going to be low. And draw an intel card. Alright. Alright, so now we go to the player turns. So again we can do these things in any order we have to do these things so i'm just going to go ahead and do them uh, starting with the claim case lead so i've got a or uh, claim one case so i take one of my case lead cards remember he's first player because he's got the so i got a claim lead on a case now i'm the terrorist mole so maybe, <laughs> maybe i don't want to claim lead i'm going to claim lead on this uh, case this uh, threat down here. Then I've got to play two intel cards now um, normally your first card you have to play to a case that somebody else has claimed then the next one you can you can play to any claimed case but um, in the rare case like at the first turn of the game like we have now where there's only one claimed case then I only can play one intel card and I have to play it to my own uh, case so uh, I'm the terrorist mole so uh, I want I want every case to fail so I'm gonna put this cooked intel card here and say oh all right I got this one guys I'm gonna put something good on there you know anyway so I did that now because I'm the mole I'd kind of like to get rid of this but if the players see me getting rid of a higher blue card they might be suspicious so I'm gonna to try to throw them off and I'm gonna I'm gonna turn in Intel card for tokens I'm gonna discard this red Intel card to get one rep token so I got that right there and then I'll just keep this card and what else I'm gonna do I'm gonna recruit a uh, a soldier so I'll just take a soldier, put it in my play area. And remember, you can only do one, get either an asset or a soldier or an agent. Then I could deploy a soldier since I have one, or 
I could deploy an agent. Um, I really don't want to deploy agents too much because that adds to the blue score. So I'm going to say I'm going to deploy a soldier and I'm going to put it on this one. And I get to look at the intel card and see what it is. And then I have to put another intel card on there. Now I still could deploy this agent if I want to. Um, but I think I'm going to be done. So now I draw, draw back, back up to my hand size. So back up to a hand size of 3. Now it goes to the next player, which is over here, which is my political opportunist. So he needs to claim um, a case. So uh, he's going to claim this one up here on the severe. And then... Uh, he can play an intel card uh, to two cases. So first he's got to play one to somebody else's case. So he's going to have to play one to purple because he's the only other one that's got a case. And he doesn't really have any good cards. So he's going to um, he's going to play this red one to purple's threat, and then he's going to play this blue one to the one he claimed. Uh, case lead on and he still got this one so he's gonna uh, discard that to get the two agency rep tokens now remember really he wants clout tokens but he can turn those in to get assets so he's gonna discard that and get two agency rep tokens and plus, hopefully players seeing him discard a high red card, they will not think that he is the uh, terrorist mole, which he's not. Alright, then he's going to uh, recruit a, an agent. He's going to take an agent. And then for his turn, he's going to deploy both of these agents onto this uh, threat where he's the case lead. And... Um, he gets to, because he's doing that, he gets to look at what the plot is. And, oh, that one's got a high complexity of 5 plus 1. So he knows he's going to need at least 6 on there. And I think that's all he's going to do. So now he's going to draw back up to his hand size of 3. So 1, 2, 3. All right. So he's done. Now we go on to the uh, last player, Green. Alright, he's got to claim a case. Well, there's only one left, so he's going to claim that one. And then uh, he's got to play two of his Intel cards. Now he's the loyal agent, so he really hates <laughs> having these red cards. He's got to play one to somebody, somebody else's case. Um, so, gosh, he, he doesn't like this. He's going to He'll play this one, since he knows this one's going to be imminent soon, he's going to put his blue on that. If I can do it. And then he's got to play one more. And uh, he'll play it down here where this red down here where he knows he's got a lot, a lot of time to hopefully get some blue cards on there. And then he's going to discard this for three agency rep tokens. Which he does like that because that's how he gets victory points. And then I think he's going to recruit an agent also. And he's going to deploy, because he knows he put that three red on there, he's going to deploy two agents there, but that does let him look at the bottom of this plot card, which is a five, and so now he has two agents, that's kind of a problem with this game, these things just fly all over the place, anyway, alright, what else can he do, uh, I guess he could deploy this soldier if he wanted to, well, he's going to save that, so that's it for him. So he's going to um, draw back up to his hand size of three cards. All right, so he's done that. So that's going to end all the players' turns.
Now we go back to the terrace turn. <clears throat> so we move the terrace marker. So we flip over the next card. That's orange. So the terrace marker moves to him. So he'll be first player next round. All right. Now we would analyze any imminent threats. Currently there are none. So we won't do that. Uh, <clears throat> now we advance the threat. So that's going to move this one up to imminent. This one up to severe. And this one up to guarded. And now we got to reveal three new threats. I'll do that off camera and then come back. All right, we had to reveal new threats up to the number of players, or equal to the number of players. That's three. So we actually got one new imminent threat, one new elevated threat, and a new low threat. That ends the terrorist turn. We go to the player's turn. Uh, remember, orange has the terrorist marker, so he's first this time. So again, remember, he needs to claim a case. Um, he will... He sees this one's a four. It's already imminent. Probably not a good chance of stopping that. But uh, he'll, he'll claim this one. This one that's elevated. Alright, now he's got to play cards. Oh, you know, we didn't talk about these gold cards. When uh, you play these gold cards to a threat, when the threat is analyzed, um, when you reveal one of these gold cards, you just do whatever it says immediately. So he notices he's got this one that immediately neutralizes the threat when that card comes up and it's analyzed. So he's going to play that. Uh, well, he wanted to play it here, but he didn't claim that case. It's unclaimed, so we can't play a card to that case. So he made a mistake not claiming that threat. <laughs> anyway, all right. So he's got to play... First, he's got to play one to um, a case that's not his. So he can't play it to that one. So he's going to play this threat as neutralized to this case um, and then he's got to play one more uh, okay, one per red intel card he's going to play this search warrant to his own case here and let's see what do we got left? This, I can't get any tokens for that, so I guess I'll just keep that. Okay, then I'll recruit an agent. Um, I could put it here. I just think it'll be a waste. I don't think we're going to probably be able to defeat that. So I'm going to recruit an agent, and I'm going to put him here. And I could flip it over and look what the, uh, you know, complexity is on the bottom of that plot card but we've already done that when these other agents were deployed now this guy hasn't so he wouldn't know but anyway we know so that's going to be it for my turn so i'm going to draw two uh, intel cards to get my hand size back and i'll be done all right so i've got three all right now we move go on to the green player he's got a claim lead on a case he'll take this one and then he's got to play two intel cards oh lord he has nothing but terrible for him anyway if he was the terrorist he would be happy <laughs> or if he was the terrorist mole um, so he's going to play this one he's got to play it to somebody else's case uh, he'll play it here to purple and he's got to play one of his own to, to any other case. He's going to play this one. He's going to put it down here since he's got plenty of time to add blues to that. And he's going to discard this one for a clout and a rep token. So that's that and that. All right. Um, so now he's going to 
instead of recruiting a soldier or a uh, agent he's going to spend three tokens he'll do two clout because he doesn't really care about it. he gets his victory points from the rep token so you got to spend three to recruit an asset so he's going to spend these two clout and one uh, rep token and now he gets to draw two asset cards and pick one uh, this one increases his hand size but this one's worth three victory points so he's gonna pick this one remember you get it deactivated this one gets discarded so everyone will see what you discarded and he'll go ahead and activate this he can do that on the same turn and that gives him plus two to any uh, religious extremist threats uh, we don't have any of those currently on the board but uh, he gets to draw two intel cards when a religious extremist threat is neutralized and it's worth three points so anyway uh, that's the end of his turn i think he could deploy this soldier but he wants to uh, well yeah, he'll go ahead and deploy it here and he'll look at these intel cards but then he's got to add one to it all right he sees what's on there um, so he's going to put them back remember he was supposed to shuffle them <laughs> first but I didn't do that all right did I add a new one back yeah I did add one back all right so now I think that's all I'm going to do so I draw back up to my hand size of three it would be four if I'd taken that other guy. Um, that's going to be in his turn. So now we come to this guy's turn. He's got a claim uh, case. There's only one that's not claimed up here. Um, then he's got to play two intel cards. Now he's got all blues and for being the mole that's not really too good. But uh, he's going to He's going to play this blue. Remember, it's got to be to a case. Oh, well, the first one he plays has to be to a case that's not his. So he's going to play this one down here. And then he's going to play this three up here. Even though he's the mole, he's going to play this high one because he thinks it won't be able to help this one anyway. So And that gets that high one out of his hand. And then... Uh, He's going to discard this one for a political clout token. Maybe everybody will think he's the uh, political opportunist. So that gives him a political clout token. And then I uh, will say he's going to recruit a soldier. And um, that's, all, that's all he wants to do. He really doesn't want to put soldiers out. But maybe that people will think that's fishy if he doesn't put one out so uh, maybe he's gonna put one out um, but just not uh, you know look at the cards on it or whatever he's gonna and let's say he's gonna deploy both his soldiers there so maybe people will think he's doing good but really he doesn't he wants that uh, threat to succeed so he's done I think that's all he's going to do. So now he draws back up to his hand size. That ends the player turn. So then we'll just go through the terrorist turn and then we'll wrap it up. So um, next thing we do is move the terrorist marker. Well, we know the only one left is green. So he's going to get that. Now you would shuffle these back up. So for the next round, you know, you'll have a new initiative deck. Alright, then we analyze the imminent threats. Well, first we start with this one. So let's bring our three agents. We know they're going to add plus three. And we're going to flip our plot card. Put our organization card. 
So we know it's got a total of six. Now we start flipping these cards over. Oh, well, you're supposed to shuffle them. For, you are definitely supposed to shuffle them before you reveal them at this point. It does say that in the rules. All right, so we got a three, a one, and a one. So a total of five, three for these guys plus two. Uh, it's definitely not going to be this beat the six nine that we have here. So the terrorist plot succeeds. So we got to put uh, those uh, plot markers. I keep forgetting what they're really called. Terrorist progress tokens. The impact is three. So we got to put three terrorist progress tokens on this track. Then each player gets um, three. Uh, political clout tokens so I've given those out here the uh, political opportunist is happy about that because that's how he gets victory points and then we have to apply the fallout this one is global fallout all players must deactivate all assets well the only player with an asset is uh, the green player at least it's not burned, he just has to deactivate it. Alright, so this threat's been analyzed. Let me discard all these cards and then we'll analyze the next one. Alright, the next in imminent threat is here. These soldiers really uh, probably don't do any good, but we'll put them there. Alright, the plot card gets flipped. And then we shuffle up the two intel cards that are here and reveal them. One red and one blue. Well, it's three against 10, 13. So this plot succeeds also. It's got an impact of two. So two more tokens on the board on the terrace track. So he's moving right along already. Uh, each player will get two more political clout tokens. And then we apply the fallout, which for this one, the case lead, which is the purple player, uh, must discard all undeployed agents. Well, he's got one undeployed agent, so he's got to discard that. And then we discard these cards, and that's all the imminent threats. So then, of course, then we would advance the threats up. Um, so you can see as the game goes on you start getting more threats and the, the markers start moving faster but <laughs> at this point it's not looking good for the loyal agents or the political opportunists because the uh, terrorists are already almost halfway up their track so hopefully they start neutralizing some of these threats but the terrorist mole would be pretty happy um, at this point in the game. So that's it. That's Homeland the game. I hope that gives you a good idea of how it plays. Kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Battlestar Galactica, I guess, you know, playing these cards. I haven't played that game in many years either, but I remember each player can play cards to a crisis that may help it or hinder it. And if you're the, you know, Cylon trader or whatever, you're playing cards that are trying to hinder the crisis. Um, so this is similar. Um, Again, I think the the theme in uh, this game, I don't really know whether it comes through or not. There doesn't seem to be a lot of theme that comes through to it, but I never watched this show. I mean, like maybe these assets, maybe their powers are related to what their characters did in the show. I, I, I don't know. Um, I can I've never watched it, so I can't, I can't say. So maybe somebody that watched this um, thinks it has a has a good amount of theme. You know, Battlestar Galactica, I remember I thought the theme from that show really came through in that game. Um, so I don't know if this is the same. To me, it doesn't seem like a lot of theme, but maybe it is. Again, I didn't watch the show. Um, it does seem fun. Now, I've played it twice now once yesterday and once in 2017 both times <laughs> solo which this game is definitely not to be played solo but that's the only way i've played it um both times the terrorist one now when i was playing it yesterday the uh 
the agency got pretty close to winning, but then the terrorists really came on quick um, and, and ended up winning. So I don't know if there's a balance issue with this game or not. Um, so really, that's about all I can say about it. I, I think it seems like it might be fun. I'd like to play it. I never, you know, like I said, I had at the beginning that I had a friend that watched this show and that's, I got it to actually play with him, but I've never done it. So maybe I'll get that done here soon. Anyway, I think that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.